Would you drive over a crumbling viaduct? In Italy, drivers have done so for years, unaware of the dangers. Today, they are more aware, but they still have no choice. Driving on a motorway in Liguria requires courage. The state of Italian motorways is a national scandal. There are about 20 badly damaged motorway bridges in Italy currently under investigation. There are also 200 illegal tunnels which don't comply with European standards. Riddled with viaducts and tunnels, Liguria is the focus of this crisis. A year and a half ago, a viaduct collapsed, killing 43 people. In the past two months, two and a half tons of debris has fallen down from inside a tunnel. Having to drive in Liguria means taking chances. The collapse of the Morandi viaduct in August 2018 was the point at which a long series of incidents became linked. In 2016, a flyover close to Milan collapsed under the weight of a truck. One person died. In 2017, a bridge came down near Ancona. Two were killed. The two latest accidents happened in Liguria after the Morandi disaster. A motorway bridge fell on the A6 following a landslide. Last December, the scene of a tunnel collapsed on the A26 not far from Genoa. Luckily, there were no victims. Luca Ternavasio is the founder of Autostrade Chiare, a citizens' pressure group that has attracted over 60,000 members since its creation in December. Our first stop with him is under the Savona Turin Highway. This is the side you'd rather not see of the Teci Viaduct. With us is the structural engineer who first warned about the conditions of viaducts in this area. They've been making savings on the maintenance of this road for decades. Ever since this road was built, it hasn't had much maintenance at all. We need to have proof, backed by technical data, that the situation is safe, that we have an infrastructure we can trust. People living in the shadow of the Bisagno viaduct live in fear of a Morandi-style collapse happening again. The bridge is considered structurally sound, nevertheless, it's due to undergo a three and a half year restoration project. Chiara has lived here for 12 years and now dreams of moving out. Here is the viaduct. Our building has been here since 1925 and the bridge was opened in 1967. This bridge is crumbling over our heads. We're really scared living here. This is our collection of objects which have fallen from the bridge. They fell over our houses, our gardens, our vegetable gardens, places where we should feel relaxed and safe. This is just one part of a three-metre gutter that fell over the bus stop. This is a motorway bolt. It also has its own code. It's the third one we found. Despite the works that are planned, Luca is skeptical. We were also told everything was fine with the Morandi Bridge, but it collapsed. There are bridges showing very similar problems. This is why we don't believe the motorway operator anymore. We are driving towards the hangar where remains of the Morandi Bridge are stored. Ongoing investigations show the main motorway operator, Autostrade per l'Italia, has lied for years about the state of its infrastructure, starting with Morandi. We met one of the chief investigators into the collapse of the bridge as meters away a replacement viaduct is being built. Starting with the Morandi case and moving on to how controls in general are carried out, we found the same falsification methods on other viaducts. Some inspections were only partially carried out, with others the documents were clearly fake. This happened both before and after the Morandi bridge. Magistrates discovered that Autostrade per l'Italia used a subordinate company to carry out inspections of its motorway network. In short, the operator was monitoring itself. The government has a total of 25 toll road concession agreements. It's one of the most complex systems in Europe. 
Autostrade per l'Italia is the leading Italian private operator with over 3,000 kilometers of highway. It's controlled by Atlantia, which belongs to the Benetton family. The company, like other operators, have financed parties of all political colors. The government has not done its job. There's a concession agreement that literally says even in the event of total negligence or insolvency on the part of the concessionaire, we, meaning the government, are required to refund the lost profits until the end of the concession agreement. So it's like signing a cashier's check worth around 20 billion euros to a private company that manages public property. And this is a contract that no one would ever sign. E questo è un contratto che nessuno firmerebbe mai. The government is looking at suspending the concession awarded to Autostrade per l'Italia and wants to toughen the monitoring system. So far it has created a supervisory agency which is not yet operational and has sent a super inspector to check the state of the bridges and tunnels at risk. Under law, control of the concessions are the responsibility of the motorway operator. The number of technicians in the ministry is very limited because we shouldn't be doing this specific type of activity. These inspections qualify as those of an extraordinary nature. And it's also exceptional just how rapidly the new bridge in Genova is being built. It will be open this spring, financed by Autostrade per l'Italia. The operator appears to be acting quickly to repair both roads and its image. About 100 construction sites are ongoing on Ligurian motorways, and it has announced an investment plan that has almost tripled for the next four years. We estimate that within three, four, five months, we will have inspected all the tunnels, both the ones built between 1930 and 1979, which are not watertight, and those built between 1980 and now, that are watertight, but have no water drainage. With roadworks underway, those who rely on highways continue to question what they see. They are afraid that crooked deals and deadly accidents may still be up ahead further down the road.